So um, again, this is not the entrance here, right? yeah, so you can remain seated. Yeah? Please be seated.
kindly stand. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. The Father's voice was heard. This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. With a humble and grateful heart, I give thanks to the Lord for this very day, for the gift of my priesthood. As we prepare ourselves to celebrate the Eucharist with a humble and contrite heart, we examine ourselves for the many times we may have failed to listen to the voice of the Lord. 
and seek His mercy and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, to my fault, to my fault, to my most and Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. in the glorious transfiguration of your only begotten Son, confirm the mysteries of faith by the witness of the fathers, and wonderfully prefigured out the full adoption of our lives. Grant, we pray to your servants that listening to the voice of your beloved Son, we may merit to become co-heirs with him. He who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Daniel. As I watched... Thrones were set in place. And one of great age took his seat. His robe was white as snow, the hair of his head as pure as wool. His throne was a blaze of flames, its wheels were a burning fire. 
a stream of fire poured out, issuing from his presence. A thousand, thousand waited on him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. A court was held and the books were opened. I gazed into the visions of the night, and I saw, coming on the clouds of heaven, one like a son of man. He came to the one of great age and was led into his presence. On him was conferred sovereignty, glory, and kingship. And men of all peoples, nations, and languages became his servants. His serenity is an internal serenity which shall never pass away, nor will his empire ever be destroyed. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus took with him Peter, John, and James, and went up the mountain to pray. As he prayed, the aspect of his face was changed, and his clothing became brilliant as lightning. Suddenly, there were two men there talking to him. They were Moses and Elijah, appearing in glory, and they were speaking of his passing which he was to accomplish in Jerusalem. Peter and his companions were heavy with sleep, but they kept awake and saw his glory and the two men standing with him. As these were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is wonderful for us to be here, so let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what he was saying. As he spoke, a cloud came and covered them with shadow. And when they went into the cloud, the disciples were afraid. And a voice came from the cloud, saying, This is my son, the chosen one. Listen to him. And after the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. The disciples kept silence and at that time told no one what they had seen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, everyone. It is good to be here. Peter said this to the Lord on the mount. I took some time during this past few days just to stay with the text, to sit with the text of the gospel text on the transfiguration of the Lord. The whole experience of Peter, James and John on the mount table. What happened on that mount and what transpired in the whole experience of the disciples in their own journey, in their own encounter, in their walk with the Lord. I believe many of us have grown accustomed that mountains, mountains have always been theophanies, manifestations, appearances of God. Mountains are always pictured in scriptures as a sacred sanctuary, a sacred space, when one is able to find the very presence of God. Behold the very presence of God. You find this in scriptures from the very book of Genesis when Abraham to the book of Revelation. You find great prophets, Moses, Elijah. You find Ezekiel. You find Peter, James and John. It has always been this moment just to encounter God. I guess they always had this perception or understanding that mountains were high places that was close to God. Mountains was a place where God would reside. Mountains were the Holy of Holies. You hear mountains of Sinai, Horeb, Tabor. Great mountains. And when I look within that whole context of this experience, I realize that whenever I stepped into a church or a, or a shrine or a sanctuary, most places were built on high places. Take, for example, the Basilica of St. Anne, the minor basilica, it's on a high place. St. John's Cathedral, it's on a high place. The Friars in Chiras, Getsemane, it's on a hilltop. Many places, Good Shepherd Sisters, and the best part of today is you're on a high place in CDM. It's on a high place. It's always been that, that experience of God. 
a place where one is able to see God face to face. And when I dwell into that experience of the transfiguration on this beautiful mount, I realized that when I looked back in my life and in the life of the great mystics and the great spiritual fathers of the church, they've always had this metaphor, this icon, that mountains were actually a spiritual climb. That mountains were a place where one would able to ascend to that experience. You find this in St. John of the Cross, the ascent to Mount Carmel, or St. Catherine, the ladder of the ascent. They were great writers in spiritual fathers and desert fathers of the church. They spoke of this great, as I said, metaphor of the spiritual climb. And as I took this couple of days and weeks just to stay with the text and to look at my spiritual walk towards that transfiguration, I first realized the most important part was the climb. I'm saying this to you because during the last two, three years in Penang, I have been so much into mountain hiking, climbing high places. And as I'm speaking to you, there's a group here seated here who is in the midst of preparing to go up to Mount Kinabalu, just a couple of weeks from now. And they have gone into this intense preparation of preparing themselves for that climb. And when I looked at this whole text, Jesus took Peter, James, and John up the mountain to pray. They had to find that climb. Sometimes the climb can be very painful. It's not as simple as we speak about. And I believe that spiritual walk, that climb that Peter, James, and John took with Jesus up the Mount Tabor was not an easy walk. It was about a self-confrontation. It was about a self-awakening. It was about a self-awareness. It was a deep search because in life, in the spiritual life, when I look at myself, it's always that painful walk. It's not about conquering the mountain. It's about conquering oneself. The mountains will never change. The mountains will remain as it is. It's about that climb that I had and we take in that spiritual climb to reach the ascent of that moment. And sometimes it is stepping into that darkest closets and the darkest shadows of our life, into our habitual life practices, Sometimes we call this the addictions of our life. And we find that we find it so hard. There are moments we feel that we need to throw in the towel because the climb is getting steep. And it's so, so painful. Because sometimes along the line, you will find companions along the journey. But sometimes you will walk alone. Sometimes you will not see the trees but the forest. And you will get a bigger picture of what is happening along your life. And that is what Peter, James and John went it. It was a whole experience of that climb up the mountain to reach that transfiguration. But it was in a very artist, painful walk up there. Scripture tells us in the journey of the discipleship, there were moments they faltered, there were moments they stood up, and there were moments they just fell to the very brim of it. And everything fell apart. But yet they picked themselves up again into that climb to reach the peak and the summit just to see God face to face. When you look at spiritual mystics and writers, as I said, you will find tremendous moments of great awareness and awakening in their spiritual walk and climb towards that mountain. To me, when I looked at this text the past few days and just sitting with it, two things just crossed my mind and I'd like to share with you. One of the most important things is when you climb, you need to learn to see. You just need to learn to see. There are so many things that happens in long that climb and we just need to see it in the walk of our lives. And I took this moment to look at this 25 years of this walk and there were tremendous, remarkable moments that just awakened. Bartimaeus asked Jesus on the road to Jericho, let me see. Let me see. And sometimes we just need the Lord, the grace to see along that climb to the peak and the ascent to that mountain. Sometimes it can be clear. Sometimes it can be a bit blur. Sometimes it can just be blinded. But it's a process of learning to see every moment how God works in us. God is always at work. And when I took this moment just to, just to look back at my climb, I realized there were so many things that the Lord allowed me to see. Not so much about what was happening outside, 
but an introspect wondering what was happening inside my life. And I guess that's what spirituality is all about. It's about stepping into that inner chamber, that inner cell, that inner room, and having that moment to close the doors and to just pray in that silence and to see some of the things that will unfold in your life. How beautiful it is to dwell in the mountains of the Lord. And that was the first thing I discovered on that climb. And the second important thing was to learn to listen. To learn to listen. Because sometimes we fail to listen the stillness. To me, this listening is what I call deep listening. It's a very deep experience of growing into that stillness. Be still and know that I am God. It's about stepping into that stillness of silence and just allowing the Lord to speak. Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. Just allowing that stillness of silence. The wind, the gaze, the breeze, everything in that moment of stillness. And that is what happens in that whole experience of learning to see. And when I found this moment of learning to listen and to listen, I took this back into my experience as a Franciscan friar. Francis was so attuned to high places. One of the most beautiful places that Francis found his silence of learning to listen and to see was Mount Laverna. He would spend months and time in Mount Laverna. The Franciscan calls this the sanctuary of God. It was the stillness of that to the point that Francis was endowed with the stigmata up on Mount Laverna. And when I looked at myself, to me, it was a spirituality of contemplation. It was simply an experience of contemplation. Contemplation, as we know, comes from the Latin word to be whole. To be whole. It simply means to capture that moment. It's just just being in that presence. Someone once said this just a couple of weeks. Contemplation is to meet the divine. Just to meet the divine. And that is that whole experience of contemplation that I find in the journey of my life. My dear sisters and brothers, the climb, the grace to learn to listen, the grace to learn to see and to contemplate the wonders of God. I believe that was what Peter, James and John found at that moment of contemplation up Mount Tabor. This is my beloved son, listen to him. They were able to listen. And at one moment, Peter saw the prophets and everything of the past and the history and all they could say to the Lord was, it's wonderful to be here, Lord. Let us build three tents and let us recite here. My dear sisters and brothers, the whole experience of this transfiguration is in our life. We are in it every moment to climb, to ascend, and to experience the table of the Lord. Let us open our hearts and minds in this Eucharist to allow the Lord the grace to open up our eyes, to open up our ears, that in this moment of climb and ascend, we may ascend to the Lord and find a moment to descend to the Jerusalem of our lives. Kindly stand for the prayer of the faithful. God our Father, you reveal your omnipotence in the superabundance of your mercy, poured forth into the world to the sacred wounds of your Son and our Redeemer. In your unconditional love and mercy, hear the pleas of your people. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, bishops, priests and religious, that their spiritual fatherhood and example of fidelity, self-sacrifice and devotion is seen and appreciated by the people. We ask of the Lord. Lord, in your mercy and God, hear our prayer. For Father Michael Raymond on his 25th priestly anniversary, that on this special day of the transfiguration of the Lord, 
just as Jesus came to do the will of the Father, Father Michael too will be guided by the Holy Spirit to do God's will. May the Lord watch over him and guide him as he carries out his mission here in CDM and may more people of the parish work hand in hand together with him for the greater glory of God. We ask of the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. For all our beloved priests, that our loving Virgin Mary, Mother of Priests, be their comfort, their strength, and joy as they carry on the work of Christ in these challenging times. We ask of the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. For all the faithful gathered here today, that we keep our spiritual fathers close to our hearts and pray that they are comforted in their loneliness, strengthened in their sorrows, and deepened in their faith, so as to reveal the face of God to the many who need to see him. We ask of the Lord. Lord, in your mercy and love, hear our prayer. For our personal intentions and the intentions of those who have asked us to intercede for them, we now pray in silence. We ask of the Lord. Lord, in your mercy and love, hear our prayer. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the gift of our priests. Grant them your blessings of good health, wisdom, and understanding that they need to follow in the footsteps of Jesus. May the vision of your kingdom allow them to become instruments of your divine grace and give them the joy in their vocation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Session, we will be offering the following gifts a food hamper. We give praise to God for his many bountiful blessings, especially in the gift of Father Michael and his 25 years of faithful service to the Lord. Anniversary candle. We give thanks for Father Michael's ministry that burns brightly and pray that he will continue to be a beacon of hope and light for all. Prayer basket, prayers of thanksgiving and letters of affirmation, a reflection of our deep gratitude to God for giving us a kind and good priest who leads us in the way of salvation. The bread and wine. As we offer our hearts before the Lord, we ask that He transform us, he, as He does the bread and wine, to continually nourish our bodies and souls for the journey each day.
pray, my dear sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Sanctify, O Lord, we pray, these offerings here made to celebrate the glorious transfiguration of your only begotten Son, and by his radiant splendor, cleanse us from the stains of sin. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, to your Son Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he revealed his glory in the presence of chosen witnesses and filled with the greatest splendor that bodily form which he shares with all humanity, that the scandal of the cross might be removed from the hearts of his disciples, and that he might find and show how in the body of the whole church is to be fulfilled, what is so wonderfully shown from first in its head. And so, Father, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power of all and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy this gifts we brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, Father, he said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once for giving you thanks, Father, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The 
mystery of celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with the Holy Spirit, we may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Sebastian, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestowed on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray.
Forgive us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the fate of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. When Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. We now invite Catholics to receive Holy Communion. Sekarang kita menjemput umat Katolik untuk menyambut tubuh Kristus.
let us pray. Holy Father, who by no merit of my own, for the glory of your name, O Lord, I have joyfully celebrated the mystery of faith to mark the anniversary of my priestly ordination, so that I may be in truth what I have handled mystically in this sacrifice. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads for God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. Amen. May he let his face shine upon you and show you his mercy. Amen. May he turn his countenance towards you and give you his peace. Amen. And may the blessings of the Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down and remain with you forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. Congregation, kindly be seated. We would now like to call upon our PPC Chairman of CDM, Zachary Chan, to give a few words. Um, stressing on a few words. <laughs> Your Excellency, Bishop Sebastian, Archbishop Emeritus, Bishop um, Murphy Pakiam. Bishop Emeritus Anthony Severnayagam, Father Michael, priests and religious, my dear brothers and sisters, good morning and welcome. Wow, can you feel the love of God and the love for God right now? Yes. We, the parishioners of CDM, a relatively new Catholic church, are truly blessed to be able to celebrate such an auspicious occasion as this for the Michael Raymond's Silver Jubilee. I remember my welcoming speech during his first Sunday Mass as our parish priest two years ago in October 2020. And I wonder if you do, Father. <laughs> that we exhorted you to wear your own shoes. And now, seeing your, seeing your ordination logo, we didn't expect your shoes to take us on such an amazing journey this far. I'm sure it wasn't easy transi transitioning into a parish priest in the midst of the pandemic. But the length you went to bring Jesus to us has been incredible. And the proof is here today. From the team at the gate, those animating in church, till those at the basement. We want to show how much you've touched us, taught us, built us. From the bottom of our hearts, thank you, Father. Happy anniversary and God bless. Thank you. Thank you, Zach. Um, before we go on with the next speech, we would like to show a little clip, a little video clip. Enjoy. I thank you, Lord, for the trials that come my way. In that way, I can grow each day. Happy to see you, Raja. I love you. God bless you. And wherever God sends you, will make you so happy, Raja. I love you, Raja. Wishing you a blessed 26th sacerdotal anniversary. Hello? To whom am I speaking? This is Chico. 
but the Chico, we have truly blessed to have known you for more than 40 years. We are thankful for those magic moments of our childhood. We are so proud and happy to celebrate the 25th anniversary of your Christmas. Happy anniversary, Father Chico! Hi Michael, congratulations in joining you to thank God for this milestone. Michael, the Lord has blessed you with a sharp and clear mind, a strong will, a loving heart and a playful spirit and most important, a love for the Lord and His people. May the Lord bless you with another 25 years of fruitful ministry in the Lord's vineyard. God bless. Congratulations, Father Michael Raymond, on your 25th priestly ordination anniversary. I'd like to congratulate you and wish you God's choicest blessings on this special day of yours. I'd just like to recall when we first met, it was in the seminary in 1994 when I first joined, 28 years ago. And today, you are in Penang, serving the Isis there. And I like to just recall when you were in Kuala Lumpur, you were also serving here, you were custos, and I'd like to thank you for all the Capuchin brothers who have served the Archdiocese too. Father Michael, just to say that I treasure this friendship and I wish you all the best as you celebrate this auspicious day. May the Lord shower you with His choicest blessings and Wishing you all the best that in all your future undertakings. God bless you. The glory around me. I am God's creator. Congratulations, Father Michael, on behalf of your Ajay sisters, especially the beloved in Ajay Shalas. I wish you all the best. Congratulations, and may the Lord continue to be with you on your sacerdotal degree to your 50th and your 60th. Happy anniversary, Father Michael! Kami umat Indonesia mengucapkan Happy anniversary untuk Father Michael Raymond atas tabisan imamat yang ke-25 tahun. Semoga senantiasa setia dalam panggilan dan menjadi berkat untuk seluruh umat. God bless you, Father. Mến chào cha và cộng đoàn giáo sứ nhân dịp kỷ niệm 25 năm ngày cha nhận sứ mệnh linh mục. Chúng con xin kính chúc cha luôn nhiều giàu sức khỏe, tràn ngập hồng ân thiên chúa để luôn luôn dẫn dắt giáo sứ ngày một vững mạnh hơn trong đức tin.
we have done it with the dignity of the heart, as he David did, and may his mercies always follow you. God bless you in your celebration today, and congratulations. We will now have Bishop Sebastian to give his speech, Your Grace. Dear Father Michael Raymond, as you continue to climb the mountain of the Lord and before you reach the top, and as you continue to listen to him and respond to his invitation to listen to him what is he saying apart from what you said in the homily today the focus is on ordination on the priesthood he's saying Michael when I when the bishop about 25 years ago laid his hands on you and ordained you a deacon which is part of the sacrament of holy orders. There are three parts to it, deacon, priest, and bishop. And you cannot separate the three. When the bishop laid his hands on you about 25 years ago and ordained you a deacon, Michael, you put on the identity of Christ the servant. You became Christ the servant. And you will continue to be Christ the servant till the very end, in fact, forever. And Michael, when the bishop and others laid hands on you and ordained you a priest 25 years ago, you put on my identity, the identity of Christ the priest. And what does that mean? The identity of Christ the head. And you will continue to be a priest forever. These two identities need each other and they cannot be separated. And of course, the third part of the sacrament of holy orders, this is sacramental, is the ordination of a bishop. So you participate as an extension in the priesthood of Christ, you are an extension of the bishop as Christ the servant as Christ the priest so that's all I want to add on to what you have said as we focus today on the diaconate leading to the priesthood so I want to take this opportunity also to announce that on the 16th of September Malaysia Day I will be ordaining two more deacons one from this parish Raymond Raj. Please stand up, Raymond. And the other from the Basilica of St. Anne, Desmond David Jensen. 
Both of them will be ordained here at CDM on the 16th of September. And finally, yesterday, since College General is here, uh, yesterday you received the Penang uh, Diocesan Youth Day 5 Cross in College General and the icon of Mother Mary in preparation for the Penang Diocesan Youth Day 5 uh, for the deanery of Penang Island, which will happen here in CDM sometime in October. So I want to thank you, College, for welcoming and receiving the cross, the youth cross, and the icon of the Blessed Mother. So God bless all of you. Have a good lunch, a good celebration. And Raymond, many more years. You are a priest forever in God's plan. Amen. Praise the Lord. We would like now to invite uh, Father Michael to come forward and Bishop Sebastian to present the papal blessing. This is the apostolic blessing from the Holy Father himself, Pope Francis. The Holy See imparts his apostolic blessing to Father Michael Raymond on his 25th anniversary of his priestly ordination. Father, we present you this papal blessing from the parish of CDM. Thank you, Your Grace. Surprisingly, we don't only have one, but two papal blessings. <laughs> I will call on Father Valentine, who is the custos of the Capuchin Order of Malaysia Singapore Custody, to present the papal blessing to Father Michael. This papal blessing is from the Capuchin Custody of Malaysia and Singapore and the parish of St. Francis of Assisi, Cheras. Thank you, Father Well. Father Michael, we have more surprises in store for you. If you could kindly make your way down to the foot of the sanctuary. <laughs> 25 years ago on this date, 6 August 1997, the now Archbishop Emeritus Murphy Parkium ordained you. It was the first time he had ordained a young man into the priesthood. In a manner of speaking, Father Michael, you are his first son. On behalf of the Church of CDM, we present you a specially designed stole. And it is so befitting we invite His Excellency Archbishop Emeritus Murphy Parkium to do the honours of putting on the stole today, 25 years later. This stool is imported all the way from the Philippines with beautiful, intricate designs embroidered with gold thread trimmings. Thank you, Your Grace. Not forgetting the children of CDM. Father, <laughs> you're not allowed to go yet. <laughs> not forgetting the children of CDM, the CEC Catechism class children who so dearly love you and the spirituality groups of CDM all wanting to express their love and appreciation for our beloved parish priest, Father Michael. We all benefit from prayer. Offering to you now is a spiritual bouquet of over 1,300 Hail Marys, 840 Our Fathers, close to 600 Glory Be, prayer to patron saint, morning and night prayers, 300 over chaplets, rosaries, masses, 100 over works of mercies, 10 days of fasting, and we just finished the nine-day novena, all for you. <laughs> Father Michael, since you accepted his call to the religious life, you have greatly impacted the lives of so many throughout your journey. We have painstakingly but with joy, of course, collected and put together your 25-year journey in a testimonial book. We would now like to present this beautiful, one-of-a-kind testimonial book that was put together and crafted with love and passion to show our appreciation. We invite our PPC Chairman, Zachary, to present this 25th anniversary testimonial book. We, the CDMers, hope that you will enjoy and cherish the book as much as we do. Thank you, Zach. 
Ah, uh, uh, wait, ah, uh, wait, ah. Uh, okay. Dear brothers and sisters, as I've mentioned earlier, we all benefit from prayer. So let's on this special day pray for Father Michael. We stand, we stretch out our hands over Father and pray this prayer together. Gracious and loving Father, we give you thanks. Kindly be seated. We now invite Father Michael to now say a few words. The priest reminded me to say a few words. Your Lordship Bishop Sebastian, Archbishop Emeritus Murphy Parkiam, Bishop Emeritus Anthony Selvanigam, Reverend Fathers, my dear sisters and brothers in Christ, I honestly have no idea where to begin to thank God and to be grateful for this very day. Master, it is good to be here. It is this very same words I uttered on the evening of August the 6th, 1997 at the Church of Jesus Caritas, Kapung Baru. 25 years, wonderful years have passed since the unfolding of this journey of my priesthood. As I've shared in the homily, the journey of my priesthood has been a beautiful climb and an ascent, a spiritual elevation, an amazing ascent to the mountain of the Lord. To be transfigured into the image and the likeness of Jesus Christ, the High Priest. To listen, to see the glory of the Lord unfolding in the many moments of my life and in different phases of my priesthood. There is so much I could share with you of the different mountains and hills and high places I had ascended and even descended on this priesthood. As the Gospel text today narrated, Jesus took with him the disciples to the mountain to pray. I thank Almighty God for that grace, that spirit that allowed me to find the trails ahead, the steep slopes, to walk across the grass and the valleys of life, for the many times of avoiding the rocks and enjoying the shady trees around. There were even times I had to stop to catch a breath, to scan of what lied ahead of me. But somehow it was always God's spirit who paved the way to press on, to start and to start again. There were many lessons that I had learned that the Lord was unfolding as I climbed to listen, to see, to sense, and to savor the beautiful moments of my priesthood. There were even times I felt the Lord was admonishing me, chastising me to remain, to stay on the trail of that mountain climb. There were times I knew I had to stay to that trail. For me to be, aware, to be aware of my steps. They were invitations for me to enter the moments of silence and solitude, to remind me to take what was only essential for the climb, to pack light and to leave behind the unnecessary weight. I would say that God had revealed and continues to reveal the path of my life to climb the mountain of God. 
There were many trails that had opened new pathways that I had to track. The view, my dear friends, was magnificent. There were short trails and there were long trails. But somehow deep down I felt free and my heart was filled with the joy of my very priesthood. God had given me so much, so much that I could even ask for. It was always the holy ground, the sacred space of what God revealed to me each time I celebrated the Eucharist. It was always a time for me to pause, to savor, and to drink the beauty of the freshness of God's presence. Looking back at the trail of my climb to the holy mountain, I have to be honest, there were many, many wonderful and remarkable individuals and groups of people in my moments of climb. Those who accompanied me, those who supported me, those who guided me and even led me. They had stepped into my life at different moments of life journey, in my life and in my ministry of my priesthood. From the very days of my seminary, I stand before you with my batchmate, my jubilarians present here. They had initiated with me the first climb. Some of us had found it difficult. Some of us took the track we had started. Some of us even took shortcuts along the way. We even bypassed certain trails. That is why when you look at them, you will always see that they are always a crime in our lives. The brothers in crime. I take this moment to thank Archbishop Julian Liao, Archbishop Emeritus Murphy Parkham, Archbishop Emeritus Anthony Selvanigam, and most importantly, Bishop Sebastian Francis for your fatherly love, concern, and encouragement in my ministry, ministry, in seeking clarity and direction. To Archbishop Meritus Murphy Parkham, I stand as your first son to be ordained by you, and I thank you for the many valuable and treasured moments I had during my ministry and work in the Archdiocese of Kuala Lumpur. To my fellow brother priests of the Archdiocese of KL and the Diocese of Penang, Thank you from the depths of my heart, the bond of friendship and priesthood. Your genuine, authentic relationships have been a gift to me in the journey of my stepping stone to that ascent, to grow mature as a person and as a priest. Most importantly, I thank you for being here in celebrating this anniversary. To my family, love begets love. I thank my God each time I think of you. And when I pray for you, I pray with love. You are a blessing to me, each one of you in the family. And you know it. There is so much I would like to share to each one of you from my heart. To my brothers, John and Richard, and to my sister-in-laws, I thank you for being there for one another and for me. To my darling, loving nieces and my grandniece, you mean the world to me, you know it. God has blessed each of you. I love you all. To my dearest mom, keep smiling and keep praying for me. I love you, mom. It would be a moment for me this morning if my dad and my sister was with me. But I believe they are with me, celebrating from above. And I guess they are smiling down and looking at me. To the parishioners from Jesus Caritas Kapung Baru who are here, thank you for being there from the very beginning. You were there at the foot of the mountain when I began my journey in my childhood and my growing years. Your presence here speaks volumes. You planted the seed of vocation when I was a very young boy in the parish. Thank you for all that you have done during the years. To the parishioners of St. Francis of Assisi, Thank you for being there, part of my journey and the journey of the friars. You have always been a pillar of strength and support to the Capuchin fraternity in their journey. To my brothers of the custody of Malaysia, Singapore, the Lord gave me brothers. You are a friend, you are a guide, and most of all, you are my abiding strength. We never climb mountains alone, my brothers. I've always leaned upon you to find that strength and that love. Finally, to the cream 
of these moments of celebration. I really had no idea what was going to unfold this very morning. To my beloved, beloved parishioners of Divine Mercy, you never, never fail to amaze me. You never fail to share with me your creativity. And the work that you do at times blows me away at times. I would like to thank all those who are present here and those who are viewing it, all members and the parishioners of Divine Mercy Sungai Ara, for all the preparations, coordinating of this celebration. From the very beginning, you told me, Father, stay out, stay silent. We will handle it. And you have done a remarkable job. You have made the impossible possible for me to celebrate this with life and love. To each and one of you who are present here from far and near, I cannot help but to thank you for the hundreds of you who have gently, silently accompanied me in my train. You have accompanied me sometimes very closely to the peak and the heights of my life. Words can never be enough to thank you for all that you do and continue to do in my priesthood. My dear friends, the climb continues. The ascent and the descent. Mount Tabor, the mount ahead. As I descend to the Jerusalem of my heart, it will be a lifelong adventure for me to step into the transfiguration, to enter into the glory of God's revelation. All I ask of you is to continue to pray for me. May God bless each one of you present here for your blessings and for your families. Thank you. God bless you. Terima kasih. Maraming maraming salamat. Thank you, Father Michael. Before we adjourn for lunch, again, we would like to thank everyone for participating in Mass and in this special celebration. With special mention of those who came from afar, as far as Australia and even Indonesia, those who have traveled from different parts of Malaysia just to be here and are traveling back after this, may the Lord grant you blessing for a safe journey. We, the nice people of CDM, are very happy to host all of you. <laughs> Lunch will be served at the basement. Please do follow the instructions of the team assigned to the area. With that, can I have uh, Father Simon Lebroy to bless the food from where you are? So we all stand and as we gather here as community, we bless the food together, okay? Can? Bless us, O Lord, and this thy gifts we are about to receive from your bounty through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we are ready to eat. I just want to thank the Norbertines from Australia who made their way down up. Thank you for coming from Australia. We have the final hymn.